Have you ever felt that your assessments don't quite match what you're teaching or your students get a little bit lost in the process? That misalignment between teaching, learning activities and assessments is one of the biggest challenges in education. But there is a solution and that is what John Biggs and Catherine Tang came up with with constructive alignment. I think that's a really powerful framework that ensures everything in your module ties together nicely to help students succeed and be effective in their learning. And that's what I'm going to be breaking down in this video today. If we haven't met before, my name is Claire and I've worked in UK universities for the last 10 plus years and I love teaching. So I really like helping people break down effective teaching strategies that make a real difference for student learning. So let's have a look at constructive alignment. It's all about ensuring that your learning outcomes, your teaching activities and your assessments are in sync. And it's called constructive because it uses that teaching theory, which ensures students are constructing their own learning. And it's called alignment because it makes sure that everything aligns in your module from the learning outcomes right through to the assessment, i.e. your learning outcomes align with your teaching and learning activities, which also align with your assessment. So let me break this down a little bit further. So one of the core parts of constructive alignment is making sure you have clearly defined learning outcomes. So they need to be specific and they need to be measurable. Now, I tend to use what's called the solo taxonomy when I write my learning outcomes for my modules. So SOLO stands for Structure of the Observed Learning Outcome, and it's a model that describes the level of learning complexity for students. So it's similar to Bloom's taxonomy, but I have a preference for this particular framework. So, for example, if I was doing a first year research module, a lot of those skills would be around I don't know, being able to identify or describe, for example, the type of study. So is it quantitative? Is it qualitative? Is it mixed methods? So I'm probably going to be looking more at unistructural with some multi-structural learning outcomes. Second year skills, for example, with a research module would probably be around things like being able to apply or analyze. So I'd be looking at that more multi-structural and the relational level. If we spiral that up again, if we think about a third year research skills module, so that would perhaps include some application, but you'd also be looking for perhaps critical appraisal, synthesis, translation of relevant knowledge to practice. So I'd be looking at that higher end of extended abstract with a little bit of relational as well. So getting the right verb in place for the right level of study with the learning outcome is vital as one of those key parts of constructive alignment. The next part of constructive alignment involves designing your teaching and learning activities. And you want to make sure that those activities align to the specific learning outcomes that you are wanting to assess your students on. So let's have a look at one of my second year research modules for an example of how I have done that. So these are the actual learning outcomes from my module. And I always feel very vulnerable showing these because I'm sure other people will look at these and think, oh, well, they're not very good. But these are the ones that I have come up with. And I think they actually work really well. So I've highlighted in bold the verb that I have used from the solo taxonomy. And you'll see there's a little bit of a mixture there really from the unistructural, but probably more towards the multistructural and the relational. And that's because it's a second year module. So I need them to be able to identify, access, select, appraise, evaluate, I need them to be able to apply some of those principles. Again, we've got analyze in there and then I need them to report and discuss. So what I do when I'm creating the activities, I need to make sure they align with these things I need them to achieve by the time they get to the assessment point. So the learning activities I will do with them is we will work in class and we will do a systematic search together so that we can identify and access those papers. And then we'll look at, okay, well, we need to select the ones that are relevant. So there will be a learning activity around that. Then there's a learning activity around appraising those papers. So what's the quality? Are they good papers or are they not very good? And so then we need to evaluate. And that's when I will get them to do a formative feedback task where I will get them to do an annotated bibliography where they talk through what they found in those papers, what was good and what was poor and what they can use for their assessment. 
Then with that second one, we're applying research principles. So they need to design and implement a simple research study. So we will have learning activities around how they design that. Like, how are you going to design a simple survey tool? How are you going to design a simple interview guide for collecting qualitative data? And then we'll have a session where they actually implement that and they collect data around that. So again, that's another learning activity. Then they need to analyze that data. So again, there are learning activities around, well, okay, you've got this data. Now, what are you going to do with it? Let's have a look and work that out together. And then they need to be reporting and discussing because the final assessment is a group presentation of a poster. So they need to have that key information to go up on the poster so they can report it and then they can discuss it verbally as they're presenting it. So all of the activities for the module, the learning activities are aligned with what I need them to be able to achieve by the end of the module. And that leads really nicely into the third part of constructive alignment, where you need to create aligned assessments. So your assessments need to be assessing those learning outcomes that you had at the beginning. So if you need students to develop problem solving skills, then use things like case based assessments or problem solving scenarios. You wouldn't want to use a multiple choice set of questions because that wouldn't align with the outcomes you want students to achieve by the end of the module. Really, you want all of your learning activities and assessment to build towards achieving those outcomes. Now, I just have a word here around the teacher perspective and the student perspective with this. So this comes from the book by John Biggs and Catherine Tang. And you've got the teacher perspective at the top and you've got the student perspective at the bottom. And I think as teachers, we tend to see that assessment as the end of teaching learning sequence, where actually students see assessment at the beginning. However, if your learning outcomes are embedded in your assessment, as you can see here with this downward arrow, then the teaching activities of the teacher and the learning activities of the student are both aligned towards achieving the same goal because it's about preparing for the assessment and then students will be learning the intended outcomes learning outcomes anyway and that's why I love constructive alignment because it ensures your teaching has a clear purpose and I think it sets your students up for success and so it involves those teaching and learning activities where students are constructing their own knowledge so it's drawing on those constructivist learning theories and if you want to know a bit more about learning theory please check out this video here now, I would also say that I think constructive alignment is part of my teaching philosophy. And it's so important that you know what your teaching philosophy is because it drives what kind of teaching practitioner you are. So I've also done another video where I talk through how you can develop your teaching philosophy. And I'm hoping I can get that to come up here so that you can click on that if you're interested in learning more about it. So I hope to see you in another video and I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.